All right, guys. So today we have Josh, our very own uh, Josh, the rock star. And today we're going to be talking about programmers. We're going to be talking about what it takes to be a rock star programmer in the game industry, right? And what do I mean by rock star? When, I, when I'm talking about a rock star programmer, I mean someone who is good, someone who knows his stuff, someone who is of AAA quality. Like, I want to find out about what it is for a programmer you learned or you would have taught yourself in the beginning and how can programmers really start strong, uh, understand the basics really well, and go high. So what is it that they should learn? And what are the problems? Like, what do you see programmers as not knowing and what holds them back? So, um, so well, when we started um, uh, Hammerplay, right, our uh, general notion was to hire developers for the developer's job, right? So this is like how every company operates. Usually you just go for the credentials, you see the resume, you see if they have, uh, have a computer science background, if they have done programming or so. Um, but I think sooner, I think we found out that uh, degrees and uh, skills not necessarily translate uh, when it comes to work. So the, the first and foremost problem, right? If you're a programmer who is just starting out, it doesn't matter if you have an engineering background or, uh, or coming from any other background. If you're going to pick up programming, right? The, the basics needs to be laid there programming by the end of the day is problem solving if you're not into solving problem solving then i guess it's not your cup of tea to begin with right so the the primary things that i usually find and miss in a program and whenever we hire right uh that they don't have any strong basics in whoops they know whoops theoretically most of them know so whoops like there are like seven properties they can mention and they they can write it on a paper um, and they can get 90 out of 100 in, in their <laughs> in their whoops uh, subject, right? But that's not the point. When you're putting things to practice, right, that's when people start to break down immediately. So whenever we see anyone's code, right, we sort of see how clean their code is and how they have applied whoops concepts from right away, right? Um, those, those, those are the first ones that we usually see from any junior programmer that we hire right away. Um, um, especially when it comes to Unity, right? Unity sort of makes a lot of stuff easy so that you don't have to practice any of these principles right away. Um, so if whenever we bring somebody inside, we give them a project right away, an entire project just for themselves to handle. Um, we like to start here and then we sort of like start to take the load off slowly. So they'll understand the entire picture at the same time and also understand the entire process of what they're doing in an entire project, right? So that's what we immediately start to do. And this sort of like has been a proven method for us inside the studio for seven years. And the best part is uh, most of the good programmers here I wouldn't, I, I don't want to talk bad about anyone who has a computer science background, even though I have one. Um, uh, are the ones who do not know how to have a notion in their head that this is a hard problem to solve or this is an easy problem to solve. Um, so if they don't know if it's hard or easy, right, they'll solve it right away. Uh, what engineering has taught you is uh, this is a hard one and this is a easy one. So you automatically have this apprehension and saying that, no, 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 this is going to be hard. And you automatically start to develop a mental block that this is going to be hard. Uh, the non-programmers who come, right? I give them a hard problem to solve and they will just solve and give it to me right away because they do not know that this is a hard one to solve. Uh, for them, everything is sort of equal, right? Uh, because they don't know what they don't know. Sometimes knowing more is also not that helpful to begin with. So uh, as a skill set, I think we usually start with uh, the application of OOPS inside game programming. That's what I would probably call it. Uh, if just going through OOPS in a dry topic, right? It's not gonna cut out. You have to tell them, this is where you apply these concepts and this is where you apply these concepts. So that's the first step. And the second step would be writing modular code. Uh, uh, when I say model report, most of the junior programmers usually struggle uh, uh, writing uh, units of program that can be plugged and played in every other project. 
uh, what they end up doing is writing UI code inside game logic and game logic uh, code has UI references out there. They'll have a text dot label equal to uh, something when the score is actually increasing. Um, they do not know how uh, separations of MVP modeling that you're supposed to use. MVP means model view uh, programming. That means the model is there and there's a view as a front end. Uh, if you guys have any background in say a full stack developer or a web developer, you would probably understand this concepts, right? Because backend has all the logic and then you have a front end that actually solves this problem. Um, game programmers start out very lazy. They just want to see the output right away. So they sort of practice this uh, bad uh, programming skills that sort of like bite them in the back. Um, the third one we usually see is how their GitHub is. Uh, because GitHub is sort of like your calling card for a programmer. The, the moment we see how much you have committed or how much open source projects that you have worked in or, or did some R&D and stuff, we go and see the code right away. So having a good GitHub uh, profile is sort of very important whenever you're starting out. So all of this can be done in, in a span of between two to three months if you're starting out. You can learn and apply these concepts right away in any project that you pick. It can be something big, you don't have to finish it, or you can start something small that you can finish it and you can also show as a portfolio. Um, when, whenever like game studios, right, big studios, they don't want to see the entire project. They just want to see snippets of your code. By just looking at five to 10 lines of your code, we can evaluate what kind of programmer you are right away. So, uh, so you don't have to show an entire project right away when you're starting out, but it's good to have one. So that means you have gone to the struggle and journey from start to end, right? That's a good thing to show as well. But by the end of the day, we just see snippets of code uh, to show, to check whether you are a good programmer or a bad program right away. Um, so yeah, that's how we start. And um, again, in a studio, right? After like three or four months, once they're good enough and they figured out, then they'll slowly figure out what kind of programmer they are. Uh, they could be a UI programmer. They want to do physics programming. Somebody wants to do particles. Somebody just wants to do game mechanics throughout. So there are like different types of programmers that you want to be. Uh, some people are incredibly keen on solving shaders and engine level programming styles. They want to modify an engine uh, or work, work, in, work as a backend programmer as well. So those kind of programmers, you can figure out right away after like, when you do a project end to end, right? you sort of show affinity to certain parts of modules immediately. That's where we also sort of track where you're good at. And then we start to push them in that direction. And then the people want to try out the, the more you take problems to solve, right? That's when you start to figure out what kind of problem solver are you, right? And what you can bring to the team. So that's called developing your core skills. So that's how that's the process that we do in house. We'll actually launch a program in which people kind of come in and they will be able to learn stuff. They will be able to kind of, they may be a little bit more, they may have done other stuff, but they'll kind of have to kind of go back down to the basics and learn. So can you give us a little bit uh, of, of how you would teach, like what your approach will be to actually teach these things? So if they're like full out fresher, right? If they're full out fresher, they do not know any programming at all. Uh, they just want to learn, then I'll probably start with Unity because um, even though Unity is not the ideal solution for all, this, all the problems out there or all the projects out there, it's a good starting point because you get a good community and most of the problems are already solved out there. And it, it's not that daunting because whenever a program starts and right, there's just so much information out there. They're just bombarded by information and they, they're just overwhelmed um by the end of it because the moment you step in right there's all automatically debate saying that you need to learn c plus plus you need to learn c sharp no no html5 is the future right so these guys all want to like future proof them at the same time but so they this is what i call uh, people get stuck in the loop of watching tutorials right they just watch tutorials after tutorials for us but they wouldn't have done nothing by the end of the day. So uh, you don't want to get inside that loop. So right away, if you learn some concepts, it doesn't matter. Start with Unity, some concepts. 
and then right away start working on a mechanic or a game idea that you have that you can finish within a week right give a liberal time of a week to just solve one project and you can abandon it completely but this is more like a sandbox mode for you to learn the concepts right away if you're a programmer who begin with so that the moment you see Programming is not as rewarding as an artist one. So when an artist draws something, you see the visual feedback right away. So your dopamine starts to kick in and you start to create that loop of interest. Programming is not like that. So you have to have this, um, this already um, knowledge of something that before you have to learn certain parts to apply it right after, right after that. And that's where Unity sort of helps you right away because you can start moving a cube right away and you get excited. Okay, I did something that gave me a feedback right away, right? So, but at the same time, you shouldn't get stuck right there. So I'm like, okay, okay I did something. I'm a programmer now. No, uh, that's a good starting point, right? That's where you're supposed to start. And then you sort of see how the uh, OOPS concepts or a software design as a whole is being applied right away, right after that, just by learning certain concepts. Right? Um, the more you learn something and right away try to apply it, right? That's where you start to learn and it will be an imprint back in your head. And that's how you became a good program right away. Um, so some tools are just not, um, um, you can't omit some tools. You have to start right away with those. Uh, one of those would be Git. So right away, start learning Git. It's not the best thing. Yeah, pick a, any Git client. GitHub has its own client to begin with. So start committing code right away so you can see your own progress, see from how I started and then how I ended up uh, writing much cleaner code, right? It's more like a history for yourself. And even uh, companies who see that, right? They'll see your progression right away. Um, so that's that's how you start as an entry de developer, right? entry-level game developer.